guys, be ready. Yes. Hi, my name is Rick Howell. I'm a TV guy, and this show is called Talk Back to Television. It's about the business of television, how we make the programs, how we distribute the programs, and mostly how we pay for the programs. Because if we can't pay for the shows, there's nothing to watch. Stay tuned. Good morning. This is Talk Back to Television, and I'm here with Andrew Thompson. I get that about right? Absolutely. It's a tough Close one, enough. but you got it. You nailed it. See that? Who's executive director of Court Avenue. And if you are like me and you tend to run things together and it's not spelled with capital letters, it looks like Court Avenue, but it's no Court Avenue. Um, Andrew, how are you? I'm really well, thanks, uh, Rick. And it's great to great to talk to you. You know, I, I I will say many people have that question when they see the name and they say, "Is this supposed to be have a space in the middle of it?" And um, I'll tell you the story of the of the name, which is, is actually pretty interesting. So, Court Avenue with a space in between was the very first paved road in the United States in Bellefontaine, in, Ohio. Oh, you're good. You well, are it's good. Right, it's it's right close to where I went to school outside Columbus. So it's and in central Ohio, all the important stuff happened. That's right. And that's you know, there's a nice memorial to it. And you know, for us, we looked at that street as a piece of technology that completely changed the speed, efficiency, and really completely changed commerce and completely changed business in this country because paved roads made this country work. Okay. So you decided that the transition from cobblestone to paved roads somehow made sense in the television advertising space? You got it. I mean, what we have seen since I got into this business in the mid nineties, what we see is continued innovation. It continues to change to metastasize and new things come and replace the old. And so if you hang on to cobblestones, you're going to get outmoded by asphalt. Um, similarly, in our business, people who hang on to the old technologies get outmoded all the time. And we've been seeing this for my entire career. Well, then you have to anticipate uh, the beginning opening scene of Back to the Future 2 when Doc says to Marty, where we're going, we don't need rope. <laughs> it's really funny. We were working with a client last week and um, we were talking about rails, payment systems, um, and those have always been these really fixed things. And we started talking about Back to the Future because at the end of the third movie, they're on a train. Yep. And, you know, um, when we talk about payment systems, we all, we, you know, we've been saying um, in the Old West, trains got robbed because the bad guys knew where they were going to be. And um, similarly, you know, in in payments, which is obviously like payment fraud is such a huge thing right now and trying to figure out the way to change that technology, the um, the thieves know where the train's going to be. Um, our current payment systems are a mess. And so Back to the Future comes up so much in our business. As All right. So t t tell us what Court Avenue is doing when you're not robbing trains. Absolutely. So. Court Avenue is, and I'll, let me start a little bit with uh, with my background. So, you know, I came up in the very early days of the web, and I had a real focus on telecom media and technology, and particularly on entertainment properties. So, you know, I was really lucky to be um, at the company that I started with two other guys, Schematic, to create some of the big changes in the way people have their content brought to them. Yep. So we launched streaming episodes for the first time in 2006 with ABC. Um, you talked to Albert Chang about that recently. I certainly did. It uh, it it won an Emmy. It caused the writer strike, and it totally changed and really started the streaming model. Um, you know that continued on when we built the uh, uh, Beijing Olympics player for NBC, and which was the first time the Olympics were live uh, and on demand or on demand event rather than something that you just saw at night on yep. TV. Um, and that really went on and on. You know, we designed uh, PlayStation 4 for Sony and really kind of changed those experiences. And at that time, the real innovations were coming in entertainment. The real change from the web as this almost like kind of a newspaper-like medium into the web as a true entertainment platform, that was all happening with the media brands. Um, I think that that has really shifted more recently and um and we'll, you know we'll we'll talk about that in a minute so i 
uh, sold my company to WPP, came into WPP, and then uh, was part of a group that led a thing called Possible, which was a big agency roll-up. We brought in 14 different agencies and created a big global digital network. We merged that with Wonderman and then to Wonderman Thompson, and now that is VML, which is the largest agency services uh, company in the world. Um, I hit a point a couple of years ago where I said, this is not where the innovation is happening. It's too big, too slow. And um, I was really craving getting back to the startup energy of building. And so I hooked back up with two guys who had also sold their company to WVP, Dan Cobby and Kenny Tomlin, and they had recently started Court Avenue. Um, it has been growing incredibly fast. And Well, hang fact, on, hang on. Not yeah. only has it been growing incredibly fast, it is number 58 on the top 5,000 fastest growing companies in America. Absolutely. This, That's this, pretty impressive, Blood. Well, and 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 the number one fastest growing agency, according to Adweek, last year. Wow. So over the last three years. So um, this week that you and I are in, today, today is August 14th, and this week that you and I are in uh, has been a lot of big news for us. The Inc. 5000 came out as the 58th fastest growing company in uh, in America. Independent and that's company. not just fastest growing advertising company. That's, no, that's the fastest growing anything company. That's all companies. Yep. And it's a really, you know, it's a list that we're really honored to be part of. Similarly, the uh, news came out in Ad Age yesterday that we were awarded, the, we were the only media services agency um, awarded by the Air Force in their, in a, a really historic and really unusual nine year, um, up to a billion dollar contract um, for the work that we're doing with the Air Force and the Rapid uh, Sustainment Office. And uh, that was a big Ad Age article on the, on the front page of Ad Age uh, yesterday as well. So we've had a big week in terms of news. Well, when you're not counting headlines and and uh, how, how do you make money? So it's a great, great, great question. So what we try to do with Court Avenue is we try to think about how has an agency evolved? So at our core, we are the kind of digital services that everybody needs. We are technologists, user experience professionals, digital strategists, creatives, data professionals, and all of the people who have, for my entire career, figured out how to help companies with digital transformation, how to help companies, which I think we sometimes think that this digital transformation world is mature. If you, the survey, data surveyed from companies just this year said the number one priority is digital transformation. And whether that be... Um, unifying your technology because you're on a lot of disparate systems as almost every company is, sure. um, whether it be trying to go, we have a lot of clients who say, we want to go from using digital as a channel to truly being digital and having digital feel like it weaves through everything that we do. And I think for those of us like you and I who live this every day, sometimes you can fool yourself into thinking, oh, you know, everybody's already got this stuff figured out. Most companies, and every time there's a merger, by the way, they oh yeah, this group and that group, and, yeah. yeah, and then you know you've got a tremendous amount of friction and challenge, and that all has to be reconciled. Well, that's so when they call you and the meter starts, right? Well, it does tend to be, and you know, for us especially, we're a small agency, right? We are mm -hmm. we are a really really specialized group, but the thing that we've done that I think is really different is around those core digital services. We've got several things that, that I think uh, that, that are, for me, it's what attracted me and it's really different from what I've seen. So one is we have an unbelievable media group, very focused on performance media that does the targeting, it does the driving traffic, and it does that kind of traffic measurement in a way that is totally performance-based, meaning, you know, um, most often, if we're not successful, we're not really getting paid. And that's that's a real market difference from what a lot of media agencies do. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's true. Not, so we call that group Modify, which is in the Court Avenue group of companies. Um, on the other side of things, we have our group called Gigantic Playground, which focuses on connected digital. And the, the motto of that group is make the world into a gigantic playground. And so that is a total focus on physical digital interactions. So think about like in-store retail, doing the, 
um, flagship stores for being able to say, you know, try on makeup with an AR mirror before you buy it, uh, customize your clothes using digital tools, and then getting those clothes at the end of it, all the way to the work that we do with theme parks. So we um, we have taken Super Mario World at Universal Studios and turned that into a an actual game experience so that you are able to play really as Mario. We have this band technology that uses you know incredible software that was actually built for making games where you and I and our other friends are there and we're hitting bricks and we're using AR lenses to you know grab things in a sort of Pokemon style um, and we're leveling up points and maybe you hit 10,000 points, you're able to go through a gate that I'm not able to go through right. until I get to that same level. And we are really playing the game. It turns the entire theme park into a game. And so we do a lot of work with a lot of different businesses within Universal on that kind of work. Okay, now listen, we are going to run out of time and I want to get to this point. We have a lot of CEOs who watch this show and they are grappling with, okay, I got a cliff I'm going to fall out over there and I got a guy over here who wants to buy me and I got to make sense of this business that I've got. Why should they call you? Honestly, I think the the concept of unbelievably high quality digital services that are accelerated with technology at a size where we're so nimble and so much faster than big agencies. Oh yeah. 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 It's really hard to beat. I mean, you know, I talked about the media group mm -hmm. and I talked about the connected to a digital group. The part that really has been the fastest growing, not surprisingly, is we have a big AI practice. Oh yeah. Um, and so we're digital AOR for Kia uh, motors. And what we've started doing this year is putting uh, AI digital assistance into Kia dealers. And we've actually gotten quite a bit of press on this as well, where people are able to come in. This is something that knows more about Kia than any salesperson ever would. It knows is integrated with every system they have down to the used and new inventory down to the VIN number level. And so someone can come in and ask the kind of questions that might have taken 20 clicks on a website like hey will this fit in my garage right, or right, right. um you know hey i'm six foot six will i fit in this car um all the way down to what lease deals do you have on kia tellurides and what do you have in stock that's under twenty thousand dollars but has a bose sound system in it and um that kind of mix of taking top level digital experiences and combining that with technology, whether that be technology for digital physical interactions in kind of public or semi-public spaces, whether that be media, whether that be AI, that is what tends to bring customers experiences that keep them coming back. And it's certainly what keeps our clients coming back. Sure. It's why we're growing as fast as we're growing. All right. Well, listen, um, we're going to have to have another conversation about this because we're about out of time. But I, I, I do want to tell you, relative to the work that you're doing with Super Mario Brothers, if you can find a way that I can keep my seven-year-old grandson from cheating at Super Mario Kart and he keeps knocking me off the road, I'll be a happy guy. I have bad news for you. It's only going to get worse. He's going <laughs> to keep getting better and we're going to keep getting worse. There you go, because it is, in fact, his generation that's doing all this stuff. You got it. Rick, all right, great buddy. Great to see you. Thank you much. I appreciate your time. And this will air in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye. It's a pleasure. Take care.